Welcome to Mrs. Fury's video number one for chapter 34, Franklin Delano Roosevelt and the Shadow of War. The 1933 London Conference composed 66 nations that came together to hopefully develop a worldwide solution to the Great Depression. The goal of the London Economic Conference was to address the global depression by stabilizing the values of various nations' currencies and the rates at which they could be exchanged. FDR at first agreed to send Secretary of State Cordell Hull, but then withdrew from that agreement and scolded the other nations for trying to stabilize the currencies. As a result, the conference adjourned, accomplishing nothing furthermore strengthening American isolationism. FDR was afraid of sacrificing American recovery by tying our currencies and the value of our currency to those of the European nations. With hard times, Americans were eager to do away with their economic liabilities in the Philippine Islands. American sugar producers wanted to get rid of the Filipino sugar producers due to the competition that they were creating. In 1934, Congress passed the Tidings McDuffie Act, stating that the Philippines would receive their independence after 12 years of economic and political tutelage in 1946. Army bases were relinquished, but naval bases were kept by the Americans. Americans were freeing themselves of a liability and creeping further into isolationism. Meanwhile, militarists in Japan began to see that they could take over the Pacific easily without Euro United States interference or resistance. In 1933, FDR finally formally recognized the Soviet Union, a communist country led by Joseph Stalin hoping that the United States could trade with the USSR and that the Soviets would discourage German and Japanese aggression. In terms of its relationship with Latin America, the United States wanted to be a good neighbor now, showing that it was content as a regional power, not a world power. In 1933, FDR renounced armed intervention in Latin America at the 7th Pan-American Conference in Montevideo, Uruguay, and the following year, United States Marines left Haiti. The United States released Cuba from the confines of the Platt Amendment, but retained Guantanamo Bay. The U.S. also lifted troops from Panama but when Mexican forces seized Yankee oil properties, FDR found himself urged to take drastic action. However, he resisted and negotiated a peaceful deal, rather than employing a military solution. His good neighbor policy was a great success, improving the United States image in Latin American eyes. Secretary of State Hull believed that trade was a two-way street. He had a part in Congress's passing of the Reciprocal Trade Agreements Act in 1934, which activated low-tariff policies while aiming at relief and recovery by boosting American trade. This act amended the Hawley-Smoot tariff by lowering rates 50%, provided that other countries do the same. It allowed Roosevelt to control taxes. As a result, foreign trade increased, and it encouraged a free trade international economic system. The Reciprocal Trade Agreements Act reversed the traditional high tariff policy that had damaged America before and paved the way for the American-led free trade international economic system that would be implemented following World War II. The effect of this foreign trade policy was an increase in American trade. After World War I, many dictatorships sprang up, including Joseph Stalin of the Soviet Union, Benito Mussolini of Italy, 
and Adolf Hitler of Germany. All three leaders established totalitarianism governments that maintained complete control over its citizens. Individuals under a totalitarian government had no rights, and government opposition is suppressed. Of the three dictators, Hitler was the most dangerous because he was a great orator and a persuader who led the German people to believe his big lie. He made them think that he could lead the country back to greatness and out of this time of poverty and depression. In 1936, Nazi Hitler and fascist Mussolini allied themselves in the Rome-Berlin axis. Japan slowly began gaining strength, refusing to cooperate with the world and quickly arming itself by ending the Washington Naval Treaty in 1934 and walking out of the London Conference. In 1935, Mussolini attacked Ethiopia, conquering it, but the League of Nations failed to take effective action against the aggressors. America continued to hide behind the shell of isolationism, believing that everything would stay good if the U.S. wasn't drawn into any international embroilments. The 1934 Johnson Debt Default Act forbade any countries that still owed the U.S. money from borrowing any more cash. In 1936, a group of Princeton University students began to agitate for a bonus to be paid to the veterans of foreign wars while the prospective frontliners were still alive. This is the Works Cited page. All images used in this presentation are from the public domain.